We Wonders. Welcome, wonderful watchers, to We Wonders, a Wii game review series by me, Soldin of the Grin Brothers. This episode will cover the Wii game, the Wii. WarioWare Smooth Moves, a Pi game developed by both Intelligent Systems and Nintendo SPD and published by Nintendo. Let's begin playing then. It's Waggle Time! Story time! A long time ago, people and strange creatures, who kind of look like Bomberman in this opening, played and worshipped a mysterious stick thing. With this stick, which has since been patented the Form Baton by Wario, the people and creatures would be compelled to dance and so performed many a dance ritual. Thus the people and creatures lived in harmony. I think. They at least had a very good time pieing. Many years passed though, and all these things were lost to time, with the many dancing forms developing into mundane activities like channel surfing, waitering, and being a samurai. That is, until renowned treasure hunter and micro game maker Wario made the groundbreaking discovery of this ancient civilization's long lost temple. Sure, Wario accidentally came across this temple when chasing a food thief, but he is generously passing around the form baton throughout Diamond City and resurrecting the lost forms for our entertainment. And our money! Each of Wario's friends slash employees have trials and tribulations going on in their lives, but their problems can be solved via the form baton. It doesn't matter if it's cheerleading, monster fighting, or spell perfecting, posing like a big cheese of a company, or pretending to be an elephant that can work out these characters' problems. And that is the story of WarioWare Smooth Moves. There is the odd recurring element across these individual character tales, but otherwise the plot is rather light. What isn't light though is character, both the game's personality and the varied cast of characters WarioWare presents. Just about every line of dialogue and every menu screen in this game oozes with WarioWare wackiness. Even the game manual has the charm of being depicted as an in-universe magazine known as the Weekly Wario and it's hilarious. The game can be so funny at times that it's a struggle to stop laughing after reading an instruction or having been introduced to a character. Through this dance, you channel the quiet dignity of a circus clown in the midst of a thunderstorm. <laughs> Speaking of characters, there is a plethora of them in this game and you get to learn of them through their own individual movie, rather akin to a fighting game. They are varied and vibrant in design with many quips, level framing and even their corresponding forms in minigames doing their part to reflect the character. Mostly. From the bold and crass Wario to the brotherly buddy duo of Dribble and Spitz to the friendly and perky Mona. One of these delightfully drawn Diamond City residents is sure to capture your heart. And now you know where uh, Nanka's outfit in the opening armor comes from. I think Nanka wears a bear, don't you? A little side by side maybe? Unsurprisingly, my favourite character here is Ashley. She's an adorable witch with fun banter with a comedic sidekick when transforms into her magical rod. What's not to love? Instruction time! The controls of WarioWare Smooth Moves are technically as numerous as the game is zany, but they generally have a shared basis across each of its activities. You have your standard remote, like menu navigation with the Wii Remote, which I remind you that this game consistently and affectionately refers to as the Form Baton, wherein pointing the Wii Remote and pressing A moves your cursor and selects things respectively. This control method also corresponds to a lot of the minigames, particularly the remote control form based minigames which happen to be the most common. Unique to the menu and map screens is the ability to hold the B button to speed up text, as well as using the plus and minus buttons to zoom in and out. Oh, as a fun little extra you can mess about with the start screen via Wii Remote motion controls. Oh, that's really cool. The plethora of minigames assigned under the categorization of forms do operate with an emphasis of motion controls with only the occasional A button, but the specific control input required can vary not just from each form to form, but also within the specification of forms. Handlebar minigames can require you to tilt, pump, shake, 
and more to complete the assigned task. You would naturally assume the boxing minigames would control exclusively via thrusting the Wii Remote forward in a punching motion, but nope, you could be tasked with rotating the remote or lifting it up and down. As a result, there are also many minigames that share the same control inputs but are listed under different forms. For example, you have Janitor Form minigames and Mohawk Form minigames that require you to imitate actions on screen by tilting the Wii Remote left and right. Aiming the Wii Remote is a commonly occurring action, such as it being the control method for some sketch artist form minigames, as well as tug of war form minigames. As such, there are times when it feels like you could use an alternative form to the one displayed, though only a couple of scenarios suggest this option. The main game uses a singular Wii Remote, even in multiplayer by passing around the sole controller, but there is additional content and post-game content that makes use of the nunchuck. Multiplayer games such as Star Nose and Bungie Buddies has one player using the Wii Remote and the other player using the attached nunchuck. Controls are the same for both controllers, with aiming the nunchuck and having it go up and down, preferably by jumping, being the control methods for those respective multiplayer games. The other nunchuck usage is through a final form you can unlock as part of the post game, so I'll avoid spoiling too much of it and its connected character. I will highlight though that it has three variations in its form, and that the nunchuck is humorously and consistently titled the Balance Stone. Connect the Balance Stone. Again, they just they commit so much to the theming of all this game. It is fantastic. Oh my gosh, it even did it just then. The controls are overall very efficient, working wonderfully in many wacky ways and being simple to understand with a quick glance, aside from the rare minigame. The lone Wii Remote is creatively used and ensures multiplayer possibilities for those who may not be able to acquire more than one controller. It is key to note though that with the wide array of motions required for all the possible minigames, then awareness of one's surroundings is certainly important. The game does a lot to encourage you to take advantage of the Wii Remote's wrist strap and caution is certainly handy when you're in a room with a low hanging light and several of the minigames have you jumping about or the Wii Remote raised above your head. Action time! WarriorWare Smooth Moves is a pie game which features many... Hold on, I can think of a better word for that. Which features a shed load of mini games with an abundance of objectives across said games. In this particular WarriorWare entry, the mini games are united by their motion controls, but the majority are also united by their labelling as micro games. These micro games are short and frantic affairs instructing you quickly on the form required and the objective of the micro game, then expecting you to accomplish this in as little as 5 seconds? Typically, a slew of these micro games are bundled together in a sort of survival gauntlet. The story mode has you at first completing a set amount of micro games grouped together via forms that the character prefers, but replays of each character's level changes things to an endless high score or aiming game. So long as you get a higher score than your family and friends by the end, then you can feel like a winner. Even if you just got Warrior crushed by a boulder. Completing levels in the story mode, both for the first time and through replays, unlocks plentiful amounts of additional content and collectibles. These include the ability to play micro games that you've already encountered within a level individually, now accompanied by explanations and an adjustable speed setting, as well as humorous collectible pose cards. Story mode cutscenes are also made viewable anytime via the movie theatre, which showcases an unflinching portrayal of Diamond City and the triumph of the human spirit. Also unlocked through completing story mode levels are expanded versions of microgames, such as the balance challenge of Blockstar or the accuracy demanding thrill of Can Shooter. These larger minigames offer lengthier experiences through several levels and increasing variety as you aim to show off even more high scores for flaunting privileges. The final story mode gameplay experience to cover is the boss levels found at the end of each character's level. These are lengthier affairs with a bit more difficulty to them, though they can range from a simple discard based game of collecting a burger to a more elaborate chauffeur based game of playing Starwing. This is a pie game though, so naturally a big emphasis is put on its multiplayer component with modes galore. 
Admittedly, many of these are very similar survival styled micro game gauntlets as is featured in the story mode, but they each have their own little spin on them. Balloon and Bomb are hot potato styled games where there are no winners and just one loser. Balloon emphasizes speed and careful planning to ensure the pumped balloon doesn't pop on your turn, whereas Bomb has you picking the forms for other players to participate in. Selection of a form they are not good at being the key to victory! Survival is a pretty self-explanatory mode, but it is worth highlighting how it can allow up to 12 players in this grueling competitive deathmatch. Of crazy fun. Lifeline, meanwhile, differs by having players complete microgames in order to gain ropes slash lives before a somewhat luck-based cut-the-rope scenario that doesn't guarantee that the player who did the best will end up the winner. So there's a 50-50 oh. chance <laughs> that even all with all my impressive victory... Oh, come on! <laughs> the power of luck! The aforementioned Star Nose and Bungie Buddies are two player versus and cooperative nunchuck wielding games respectively. Star Nose has you piloting spacecrafts in the shape of Warrior's Nose because this game has a bit of, a, of an obsession with that body part of its protagonist for some reason, and seeing how long either player can survive without crashing. Bungie Buddies has you hopping up and down to avoid holes and hazards as you and a rope joined fellow fellow try to run as long as possible, although the running is automatic. Then there's darts. It's darts. You play a game of darts via the Wii motion controls to throw your dart and it's no different than a normal game of darts. A game I apparently did not know how to play until WarioWare taught me. The core of WarioWare Smooth Moves is its micro games and whilst one may be poorly explained or a little finicky, they are mostly accessible and frantic blasts of fun with variation galore. Several micro games with several speed settings, several difficulty settings and several ways of being organised ensures unique romps of fun each time you are motivated to play for higher scores or witnessing your friends imitate an elephant. Even the non micro games are creative spots of entertainment that add a neat break to the usual rush rush putty nature of micro games in favour of more concentrated experiences. A lack of sound options is a commonly frustrating aspect of many Wii games, which is also the case here. Said sound is superb though, with a series of upbeat and befitting melodies for the crazy cast of characters, as well as cool little elements such as voices coming from the Wii remote during the telephone micro game. That's right. Oh cool, the sound of that actually came out from the Wii remote. Yeah, I forgot the Wii remote has a mic. The graphical stylings of this game are cute, colourful and have aged wonderfully. Some of that credit going to the delightful designs Diamond City and the WarriorWare crew spot. There is actually a plentiful amount of art styles in this game due to the micro games, with the inclusion of 3D models, accurate video game replications, and more establishing a bizarre contrast that works in this game's favour. Ending time. Waggle time is over, and the two questions left to answer are as follows. What are my overall thoughts on this game, and who do I recommend this game for? WarioWare Smooth Moves is the type of game which adds an extra element of challenge in tasking players with focusing on ever-shifting controls and actions whilst trying not to laugh. It's chaos, gloriously fun chaos regardless of it being a single player or multiplayer experience and all presented with strange, simple silliness. Due to its ease of access, it'd be quick to suggest those who might not be accustomed to the game. As a result of its hectic speed and demands for movement, those who are slower or with physical problems may risk injuring themselves in an attempt to keep up. Likewise, younger children may not be able to comprehend the new task delivered to them in the sliver of time provided. The audience best suited for this game can change depending on how you want to play. It's a pie game and one app to bring out for a banquet of laughter for both the participants and those watching the insanity unfold. For those looking for challenge, they can strive to capture high scores across the wealth of varied games in the single player. There are also those who'll simply like to experience the uniqueness of the mini games whilst appreciating the company of Wario and his pals. With so many modes, there is sure to be something to suit most folks tastes. Unless you dislike mini games, which is the whole point of this game. Whether you'll choose to play the Wii Wonder that is WarioWare Smooth Moves is up to you. But either way, I hope you enjoy this review and thank you for watching. <laughs> thank you for watching. Cheerio!